First, we'll take statements from the public. Do you have Kelly? Are, are you? This yeah. The public? Yeah. We have a little. We got something to read to you. We had a little meeting down at the Pizza Pete. A bunch of merchants did, and they asked me to, to, to read this from Judd. It's important to remember this is a discussion about ideas. No one is setting any set in stone at this point. We're merely collecting community input so we can let NDOT know what our community would like to see. On Monday, August 5th, a group of about 40 businessmen on Main Street discuss the upcoming 2017 Main Street reconstruction project. The, the group discussed several opportunities, concerns, and issues and seemed to come up with some conclusions below our list of the issues discussed. Left-hand turn lanes. Most of those intended attended are opposed to left-hand turn lanes due to the fact of having them would result in lost numerous parking spaces on Main Street. Even without great even without creating left turn lanes, there does not seem to be a desire to take advantage of the opportunity to do so or, or to make, make sure the traffic is not regularly backed up as a result of those left, left at the intersection. Some suggestions include creating a little more room at the intersections to give drivers a greater comfort of going around the individuals or stopped at the turn. Another idea was asking NDOT about putting in a light that would have a left turn for a short period of time before it allows on traffic to start. Uh, wider Main Street. Most seem to support asking NDOT to widen Main Street on both sides if possible. Even if the, even if the spaces gain a foot or two would help the parking work would be required. This, this, the desire to, to widen Main Street must be weighed against how much additional disruption during the construction period. As a result have, of how much wider Main Street might become more weighted against how much longer the construction will take. The wider Main Street like likely only the issue from 3rd to 8th Street or 9th. It's not much an issue from 9th to the north. As a result, it might be necessary to worry about wider Main Street <coughs> from the 9th to the north. Parking meters. We agreed that there has to be some form of regulating parking on Main Street. Many business owners feel that parking meters should remain on Main Street. However, it seems to be a consensus that the current parking meters are insufficient because they do not work and those that do work are inconsistent. This provides a deterrent customers parking on the, on the streets. If parking meters are going to remain, it will be advisable to look into new parking meters and get rid of the current parking meters. It might also be worth discussing other alternatives to regulate the parking on Main Street without meters. If meters are not kept on Main Street, there needs to be a suitable plan regulated parking on Main Street. Ninth and Main Street intersection. There is substantial legitimate concern about among the residents living close to the intersection of Ninth Street and Main Street regarding the discussion of changes in the intersection. A study that has been conducted by NDOT on this issue should be considered and presented to those residents before any decisions are made regarding that area. Street lights. There seems to be a consistent that the opportunity to replace the current street lights with more decorative street lights. Trees on Main Street. There was discussion regarding whether the trees on Main Street would be replaced. If they're replaced, many believe it would be nice that have a consistent appropriate type of tree on Main Street. It's also very important that the, there be a commitment to maintain the trees if they are to be replaced. If there is no commitment to maintain the trees, it may be best to not put the holes in the new sidewalks for trees. Sidewalks, new sidewalks it would be appreciated in some locations where sidewalks are new where the sidewalks are newer, but the sidewalks should be consulted or to be determined whether or not they would like to have the sidewalks replaced. There's also discussion regarding whether it will be possible for the sidewalks to be done prior to the Main Street being done. This, this is a question for NDOT. Limestone curbing. It's extremely important that the limestone curbing be preserved. According to John Newman, 
who certainly is one of the most knowledgeable about the historical content of the community and how it relates to the rest of the state as anyone. Brookville might be the only community in, that has limestone, limestone curbs. It is important to stress to NDOT that we expect them to preserve the limestone curbs. Commitment from NDOT. There's obviously a concern that this project itself is overly burdensome on the business owners. The town needs to seek commitment from NDOT regarding the length of the project and that the DOC will be able to keep tra traffic open on Main Street throughout the duration of the project. Action item. In addition to considering the above issues and discussing with NDOT, the following seem to be the most important action that the town can take immediately. Number one, there seems to be consensus among business owners that the most important thing the town could be doing between now and the, pro the proje project commences in 2017 is identifying and creating additional off-street parking. Because parking on Main Street would be extremely difficult and limited while the, the project is being completed in 2017, for business to remain proper, their customers have to have places to park. The additional parking will be comparative to those during the project, will be extremely beneficial to them after the project is over. A large map identifies locations that should be explored for additional parking. Areas marked in yellow represent current parking areas that can be improved. Areas marked in pink represent the areas that can be easily developed in additional parking. Please keep in mind these are just ideas of locations and they involve pieces of property that are owned by private individuals. All we're asking is the town to look into the opportunity to making some of these public parking to benefit all business as well as their customers. This is absolutely no desire to force anyone who owns a property to, to allow to become a public parking. However, there is no reason to have, not to have this discussion about what opportunities might exist and will be beneficial to everyone. Business owners simply feel it would be appropriate to start discussion concerning these pieces of property now and there are possible avenues to create public parking in the areas. Areas demonst demonstrated on the map are certainly not exhaustive and there will be additional areas where parking may be created. Once created these parking areas, it should be clearly marked parking. Rather than unique parking signs, it may best utilize the reflective blue sign with a large P that is universally recognized as identifying parking locations. Again, there are, these are simple, simple ideas and concepts that we need to discuss. It is our desire to have the opportunity to look at any studies and informa information available by NDOT our desire is to maintain the open communication so that we can continue to have input regarding this project. Thank you. Any other comments? Statements from the public? <clears throat> I'm Randy Kneeman. I would like to have maybe five, ten minutes of your time on it. Okay. Is that all right? Sure. Go ahead. I am from Save a Lot, and I'm actually the owner. I've been owner for 22 years. And I don't know his. Anybody in this room ever been through a project like this before? Well, that's what I'm here for. I've been through it four <coughs> times. I've closed four stores. It is not a pretty situation. I'm not saying the road doesn't need to be done. The road needs to be done. But historically, when you bring on NDOT and a contractor like Milestone or Amera, and if you do not hold their hands and give them strict rules of operations, they will make a mess of things. They, they'll come in and, and do what they want at all cost to, and they could care less about the businesses. They take their checks at the end of the day and go home. Um, even with road openings, what my experience has been, they're, they're claiming they're gonna keep the road open, which is fine, but even with leaving the road open, you have your elderly people and the female population that will not drive through construction. You're gonna take away 50% of the traffic flow and the customers right off the bat. They will not drive through it for either they don't want their car dirty, they don't want damage, or they don't want to be an inconvenience for the customers. Either way, they will not go through it. 
um, every situation I've been in, that that is what happens. Um, the other side of it, time frame, Batesville project, Pearl Street, eight month project, end up being two years. Um, Lawrenceburg, um, Lawrenceburg was a year and a half. North Vernon, I've never seen any um, go under a year and a half. As soon as they touch utilities, you add to your TIF project. Yeah, so I think one of the lines I read was the water line, if they widen the street, they may have to move the water line. You're going to add a year to the project as soon as utilities are involved. The other thing nobody's even discussed is the ADA requirements. Um, where all your ramps going up the sidewalks, uh, current code now on them, they have to be sawed out and put in red, poured back in red and cement. You got a hundred of them downtown. Nobody's even discussed it doing that. And that's a that's a major project just within itself, um, changing all your ADA ramps. There's a lot of underlying stuff here that I see is going to happen. And what what happens is people that's never been through this, they, they look at the finished project. And yes, it will be beautiful. You'll look down Main Street and you can visualize a, you know new sidewalks and curbs and trees and all that. Yes, it's beautiful, but at what cost? Um, typically, the businesses that survive through something like this, you'll end up at the end of the day, when it's all over with, you'll end up with lawyers, insurance offices, real estate offices, professional businesses. But the retail businesses usually don't survive. And you can, like I said, you can go to Walnut, Walnut Street in Lawrenceburg. I can take you any town around here. Pearl Street in Batesville. Um, um, Rushville just went through it. They, Rushville lost 22 businesses during their course of construction. Um, I mean, it, it's, I don't want to be a naysayer, but man, you got to go in there with open eyes. Um, it, it's, it, it's, there's, there's a downside to it. Don't look at the finished product. And, and that's what, and even during the course of the construction, me and Kelly talked outside. They'll promise you stuff, and once that um, road construction guy gets on site, he's looking at, okay, how can I make my company the most money and get this job done? He, he's not from around here. He lives in North Vernon or Seymour. He don't care about you guys or us guys. He's, he's going to do whatever makes his job easier so he can get out of there. So even during the course of construction, you have to have somebody holding their hand, somebody with authority and checking them every day and saying, okay, are you changing the scope of the work? Because they will change the scope of work during construction. Um, me and Kelly were talking, um, what town was that? They promised to leave the road open. They Fortville. Had, Fortville. They I promised to, the lady this afternoon. They promised to leave the road open. No, they just shut it down. But even leaving the road open, you're taking away a lot of business. You'll you're taking destroy away. my business. Yeah. You'll destroy Wild Bill's business yeah. because yeah. the average person Jane Clinky doesn't say, well, let's go down to Keys of the Pass and buy antiques. <laughs> Sir, you did, not, you did not have the floor. Okay. Oh, but but I, I guess what I'm saying, so you're saying, okay, here's all the negative. You know, but I do agree the road needs to be done. I do agree that <coughs> some sidewalks need to be done. But don't throw the baby out in the bathwater. Don't take all their money and, and try to get, you know, fix the sidewalks where it needs to be fixed instead of, you know, mass doing it. And I know for a fact that they're going to have to address this ADA thing. Um, I, I mean, that's a given. We brought that, we brought that up. But, yeah, I did see it in the paper. But if you drive down through town, there's a ton of them. I mean, there's a mess of them down through town. So somewhere there's got to be a comprehensive plan to do this without destroying, because the businesses you lose are the ones that don't come back. Your franchise businesses will stay around. You know, you'll have McDonald's, Family Dollar. You know, you'll keep your lawyers, your insurance office, your real estate offices, um, because they're professional. They, they can go to their customers if their customers can't get to them. Um, but as far as the retail end of it, it's usually not pretty far end. And um, I talked to my wife about it, and, and then there's a whole other end of it. I mean, the emotional end of it. I don't know if I could live through another one. It's, it's that depressing. You know, you open your business up and they can't get to your business. You stand there and 
look at a door that nobody's coming through. It, it's, it's tough. And um, I, I just wanted to bring everybody aware to that side of it because of my experiences. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Anyone else? Wish to say anything? This is like Wild Bill, which right now are, are staying alive, but not easily. And then to uh, completely eliminate uh, the parking that is close to our stores would, in fact, destroy us. We have to compete with other businesses for parking that have more, um, shall we say, more turnover than we do. Our business is mainly people who are driving through our town for tourism. A lot of it is also for Wild Bill, and sometimes we draw on each other. <clears throat> and if that turn lane does go in there, and the parking, which are, well, I think, I do believe we lie right in there where that uh, half a block starts getting narrowed down for the turn lane, um, every day we get a customer comes in and says, wow, we've never been in your store before. We didn't know it was this nice. Uh, we never stopped because uh, we just, there was always some, you know, no, no parking. There was no easy way to get in. And then we start seeing them all the time after that. Hopefully, we look forward to the fact that the town will uh, have an upgrade. Trust me, we do. We just want to be around when the upgrade is done. So we want everybody to take into consideration those, you know, those things. It's going to be hard on every business in this room to stay open through uh, a complete slowdown. And hopefully all of them know in over the course of the next two years before this begins, they need to be putting money away on the side just to get them through those hopefully six months, which will probably turn into 15 months because I also read up on a place in Detroit, they did a three-quarter block area and it took them 15 months to get through it. And there was, we have opportunities behind our buildings, there is parking back there if it was cleaned up back there prior to them setting up this uh, construction where customers would get used to parking behind the buildings and being able to have clean alleys to walk up to, to Main Street to maybe to get into the, the, the local stores. But you got the Wool Young building, which is, uh, which is completely overgrown and destroyed, and uh, that would be easy parking. Um, I know our building has parking and all along back there, but it needs to be widened and cleaned up a little bit. That's all I really got to say. <coughs> get the map, I'll get it and bring it in. Um, I don't know what anybody else experienced when April hit, oh, yeah. but um, Route 52 just being shut down for uh, a month to five weeks, whatever that was, I lost about 55% of what I would normally do on that month. And as a small business and a new business, yeah, that was, that was it's tough. You know, especially being a new business, and, and that was just being closed down for five or six weeks. And not completely closed. So, uh, that's just a taste of what we're probably getting ready to experience, and I'm telling you, and my, and my concern, I'm, I mean, I know there's a lot of people concerned. So, Kelly's concern, it's going to affect his business down there for Pizza Pete from, from one end to the other. It's going to affect every one of us. This is behind Pete's Feet, down the alley. This is Rick Bender's building. You get 12 or 15 lots, that'd keep me in business. <coughs> this is behind Rosenberger's, and it's cleaned up. Um, where's that at the name? Is that behind uh, Brad Tabby? Yeah. No, that's behind Nixie's. Behind Nixie's. That's behind Brad. I don't think you can get into that lot. Yeah, we talked about that. This is if I. This is Bill's. And okay, I uh, parts. Yeah. Bill's wanting to tear the back of his building off, pave all that. That'd be great for you guys to keep you in business. This is right between the Wood Apple and the Eagles parking lot. And I get he Kinnett owns it. Be another lot, but that's some of the ones he's looking at. And he said there's state money there, but we can do it. No parking on Main Street 2017 the whole summer. I don't have any I don't have a parking lot. I'm done. 
I'm toasted. So is those guys? So is you guys? A bunch of us. I don't know that I didn't ask that question. I, I said that uh, it'll be one strip. It'll go one side at a time. Whether they're going to not have any parking on the opposite side or not, I'm not sure of now. I can find out. I tell you what, they got a bad track record. I talked to later in Portville that I gave the paper. They promised her flaggers on each side. One mile of road. They come in and shut both ends down. Her route to, for her customer to get to, they went six miles around. She said they destroyed her. And she said, that was like three years ago, she said, she doesn't have any business. Everybody found new places to just shop. They said it just flat lied to her. Rushville, same thing. Talk to the mayor up there. We're going to keep it open. They shut it down from the railroad track all out to Walmart. The uh, Rush County Hospital lost a million dollars in revenue. Right. Later. You lost your school right up, up there too, right, man? Yeah. He lost. I, I, was, I was involved in that. And it was, an, and I've never seen them yet do something six months. It's every pro. You, you go to every town around here, and at least it's been a year and a half project. And like it says, as soon as they touch utilities, the time frame just goes up the window. Um, my suggestion is they can come in with one of the big road graders, grinders, and they can start one end of town, and they can grind the whole town in a day, five, eight inches down, come back through the next day, repave it. Within three or four days, they're out of here. Why, why does it have to be a six months or a year and a half project? Come in, grind the top surface off, come back, lay new surface out, and go home. Do it again another seven years. Yeah, and, and they'll say, well, it won't last that long. Well, at least everybody's still open. And yeah. if, it, if it lasts six, seven, eight years, well, then do it again in six, seven, eight years. The states go through all kind of money at you, and you're going to have visions of the finished product, but at what cost? You might be better off not taking their money. That's my opinion. A lot of the concerns that you had this evening, we also had at that meeting. Uh, you weren't here to support it, but uh, we did convey it to them then. We will continue. And I feel like now that you know what's going on, you'll be more proactive in, in keeping abreast of what's going on and helping us help you. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the parking, yeah, we can help you, but I don't know that we can mandate it. You know, that's, right. that's kind of up to you guys to work out amongst yourself. Uh, with our help, uh, but we will continue to work with you, and we're glad you're here. And uh, you know, that's really all we can say right now. Yeah. We're new to the project as well. And I think the idea that you're wanting to start right now is great mm -hmm. because this gives us a couple years to plan for the parking behind the buildings, plan on trying to use Franklin Avenue somehow or the alley in between there and Main Street, and. Uh, it's, I've got, I wrote down a lot of things before we came today, that, and things that we had already discussed in our meeting, and uh, to start working on them right away. So it's not something that, we're not doing this so we can shut down businesses. <laughs> we're trying to make the town better, and we understand all these concerns, and the good advice over here about his experience with it. So I think this is, this is a good thing to hear. We've worked with the end on I've been on the board approximately 30 years or so. Uh, the stories I'm I'm hearing now is is a lot different than what I've actually uh, had with Indon itself. They've seemed to always work with us. I can see how these circumstances would happen, but I would say that it, it would be our our job to go to them and give them. The information that we have received, and ask them if they can make sure that doesn't happen in Brookfield. I think it should be in writing. People I've talked to that look them straight in the face and tell them, and they don't do it. Did you say most of the problem doesn't come from the state? It comes from contractors. Is that what you said? They're saying both. Both. Rushville said, I talked to the mayor, said, stay together, get the police, fire, mercy, but stay together, keep on them. 
get in the right and have a meeting with them once a week. There's concerns that come up. Have a sit down. Even during the course of the project, yes. you cannot <clears throat> leave them unchecked. Right. Because that road supervisor out there on the street, he don't care about you guys. He's just trying to get his job done cheapest and fastest way to get out. He's going to go home, like I said, next town over and don't care. What is it going to do to the side streets? Is it going to affect the side streets if, if traffic's going to be run along the side streets? I mean, is there concern that the side streets might be It's too damaged? early to answer that. Okay. I'm sure they will be affected. The whole town's going to be affected. How we don't really know. I also heard one way that they could do it was they were going to do a block at a time. That and was mentioned, and that's one of the things that was discussed that day. But and if they did um, that, I mean, like I said, some of our business is predominantly just impulse people to say, oh, Lord, right. stop. We can take a couple weeks, like the whole summer. Yeah. Well, if it's six months, I think I could survive six months. It's once you go beyond <laughs> six months, I mean, the new businesses can't save that much money in that short of time just to. To survive zero. I'm John Corner, Corner's Country Kitchen, talking with Kelly and stuff on like shutting down blocks at a time and doing one side lock at a time, one side lock at a time. That made more sense than anything. <coughs> if that's a way to do it, I mean, that would, to me, make more sense than anything. The answer I got from well, end up the person I talked to. Then you go in and do the road. Yeah. Well, look, he talked to someone. He can maybe go to okay. I talked to a man from end It was yesterday morning, and uh, I asked him what happened to the one block at a time situation, and he said our engineers feel the traffic flow will be better. That's a state highway. With, with one at a time. So he was agreeing. With huh? He was agreeing with the with one no. side. One, one side, side at a time. Mm -hmm. That would be the flow of traffic going through, <coughs> and not the flow of traffic stopping. People controlling. That's what we're assuming. <coughs> but there needs to be a lot more conversation. Too. And there will be. Are you guys going to get anytime soon? I think so. We'll be having conversations with them. But again, I don't think so. you know, no, so. can we sit in on that? Yeah, yeah. and we all come. Can we all come. Some of them are public meetings, I'm sure there will be. I think the major decision that we have to, that will have to be made is whether or not to widen Main Street. Because if we widen Main Street, then that's when you get into the, the big the project. Into water. And, and the utilities. It will definitely affect utilities because a lot of the meters are too close to the curb already. And it would also mean taking out the trees and all that kind of stuff. We missed that one. Though. If we're going to do that, we should have dealt with the water lines. Well, I know. And um, so that's, that's basically where we're at. If we didn't might widen Main Street, I mean, it's a matter of just repaving Main Street. And they would still have to do, I believe, the ADA, uh, the curbs, or the at the intersections. But um, yeah. and it would be a lot less costly to not widen Main Street. But as anybody that drives down Main Street knows, it's pretty tight uh, when you're passing a semi or a uh, motor home or something like that. So that's where we're at as far as making a decision. Going slow through town is not a bad thing. No, you know, and yeah. you know, <laughs> some of these improvements are going to do speed up traffic. Yeah. Does anybody know what the speed limit is on Main Street? It's supposed to be 20 miles an hour. Until you get to 30. Exactly. But I'm going to tell you right now, you could make a fortune if people were given tickets on Main Street. So, why didn't that street, if they don't monitor the speed limit on this thing, it's even going to be faster than people going through there instead of doing 20 mile an hour. And it should be 20 mile an hour. The average speed is 45, I would say, on average. On average, I'd say it is too. The, uh, the curbs that are historical, the limestone curbs, how, how would you preserve those? What they told us that they would take the uh, 
stone, I don't know if it's limestone or laurel stone, and they would take it to the north end of town and replace any, oh, okay. which makes sense to me, and I'd like, so be a nice like to see that happen. Mm -hmm. And they would give us the ones that they didn't. I just wasn't use. sure they would just leave two of them with the new ones and say that. Right. I wasn't sure. Oh, a kicker on Rushville is, I just remembered this, they got Rushville all done, opened it up, the state come down to inspect it, it didn't meet their inspection, they shut it down again and reground it and repaved it again. So it was shut down for like a year and a half, went past inspection, and they ended up re <laughs> closing it down, regrinding it, and repaving it. But that, I'm just telling you, this is what you deal with when you deal with the state yeah. and the contractors. But they end up doing it twice because it didn't pass inspection the first time. So it seems to appear to me we're all kind of on the same page tonight. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. 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 So I think if it's all right with you guys, we'll move on. You okay? We have an interest in uh, the community and, and the restoration of the nativity figures. And what I'd like to do in the next couple of minutes is present a proposal to the board and uh, if possible, get your okay to move forward. From a distance, the Brookville community nativity figures don't look too bad, but up close presents a different picture. The paint is worn, scratched, faded on all of the figures, and some even have holes in them from uh, probably from rough handling, uh, stacked storage uh, over their years of service. As they are now, they're serviceable, but our community can come together and we can do better. <clears throat> the following proposal is therefore placed before the Brookville Town Council. Transport the figures to a large pole barn here in the Brookville area where the holes can be fixed and the figures repainted in preparation for this season's display. Contact has been made with uh, Pam Denton, Franklin County High School art teacher and Jerry Manus, retired Franklin County High School art teacher, to lead a group of art student volunteers after school and on weekends to perform the task. With professional supervision, quality materials, and a good place to work, this project will come together with the desired results. Pam was excited when I told her about the idea to involve her students. She saw an opportunity for teamwork, a sense of pride and accomplishment, and the opportunity for her students to learn the, the art of airbrushing. In order to accomplish the task, Jerry estimated it cost around 150 to 200 bucks. It's not a, not a great big sum, but we still have to buy some paint. Uh, <clears throat> he explained that he can mix any color needed from primary colors of red, yellow, and blue uh, into a white base. Secondary colors of green, orange, and purple would only raise the number of cans of paint needed to seven. There are many different colors now in use on the nativity figures, and with Jerry's expertise in mixing, this will make the materials procurement process much simpler. We'll also need patching material for the holes, such as fiberglass or Bondo. Exactly which or what is best uh, still has to be determined. In order to provide a small amount of financing necessary for this project, Fred Chapelo has been contacted regarding fundraising. Uh, ideas from uh, donation jars located in local businesses, special offering contributions from local churches, or to publish a nativity fund uh, held at local banks where citizens can donate. All of these have been discussed. Uh, Fred particularly likes the idea of involving the churches. Doing this rather than just a few of us getting together and throwing $20 bills into a hat presents an opportunity for community involvement in the project. <coughs> the timeline for this project starts tonight with your approval to transport the nativity figures from the police station to the pole barn. Wayne Monroe, he's in charge of transportation. Arranging and publishing a work schedule for the art students is next, along with fundraising starting as soon as possible. It's important to start soon so that we can beat the cold weather that's coming that inhibits paint from drying. We've got half of August, all of September, and October 
and most of November to accomplish the task. There's the names and phone numbers of uh, the folks involved so far. And if you all will say yes, we can get on with it. Thank you. Any questions from Mr. Chairman? Darrell made the motion to approve the private <laughs> project. Second. Awesome. Sam, second. All in favor? Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Start tomorrow. There's only one little problem. Uh, the county got a little letter last year that we couldn't put them on the courthouse yard. No, that, that they're going to go up. That was addressed at another meeting back last whenever, so that's, that's, that's not what we're here Well, that's their problem. About. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. There's going to be some help. Well, they'll be ready. <laughs> but we're going to be ready. Okay. But, uh, <laughs>